Almost everyone I know vapes. Cool kids, popular kids, athletes. It doesn't discriminate in groups. Almost everyone I know vapes, and they're all under the age of 21. Approximately 60% of the students that I see vape. I'd say close to half. 75 to 85%. The amount of people that I know that vape, surprisingly more than I realized. The question is, well, at least they're not smoking. Well, vaping and smoking, uh, the example that's given is, well, would you rather slam your hand on a rusty nail, or would you rather slam your hand on a clean nail? They're both gonna hurt. They're both negatively impacting you. Vaping starts socially to fit in or um, to be doing what your friend group is doing. So it starts off as a, a social activity and then it quickly becomes a dependency. Everyone knows how addictive nicotine is and so when we're putting nicotine in a bunch of things and especially when our under 18 year olds or under 21 year olds are utilizing nicotine, it becomes really dangerous. Dependency and addiction happens when you don't have a lot of coping skills. So anytime I work with a student who's vaping, I try to understand if there's anything else that they do to manage their stress or manage their mental health symptoms. And usually what happens is vaping is their only coping skill. And when you only have one coping skill, that's where dependency and addiction lives. So they, it starts off socially and then they it feels good and it helps them calm down, it helps them release serotonin and dopamine and, and whatever, and then they are dependent on that. A lot of middle school and stuff, they do drugs now to cope with their pain and to cope with situations that are hard for them. What I think that makes vaping attractive is because all the hype on it and all the peer pressure that people have for it. And then also what the people who is pressuring people to do it, it's a electronic device that um, has different flavors. So it's like a type of candy. I think that if you vape, it leads like an open door to like, what does this drug do? What can, how can this help um, as like, because a lot of people use it as a coping mechanism. The most recent trend is how they're putting marijuana inside the vaping cartridges and that there's really no regulation on how they can access it. One of the things that we have seen is in Battle Mountain, there were four students who were vaping what they thought was THC vapes, and they were laced with fentanyl, and all four of them overdosed. They were revived, um, but unfortunately, when we say we don't know what's in them, we are serious, anything could be in them. We as adults need to do our research, know what is in a vape, and educate others so that we, we can stop this epidemic. One of the main things, and this is, this is something that's really hard to believe and sometimes it's hard for people to wrap their head around, is actually parents and role models are like the first line of defense against vaping and marijuana. Being somebody who can be an example and show them that, hey, you have different options other than using these negative impact devices uh, that are detrimental to your health. Normalizing that there's lots of students that don't vape and just talk about the practical things like you're, you're saving money and you're having healthy, uh, healthy body and healthy lungs and giving them talking points so that they can talk to their peers when their peers are vaping or talk to each other at parties or whatever. I think that's uh, a something that we could do. Another thing that we could do is have uh, clubs and groups at school talking a lot, talking a lot about vaping and making it um, something that's really, really normalized that we talk about. Well, the main protective factor is um, having a, an adult that they can trust. Also, um, the parent in the home, um, they should be the first role models that the, the, parent, the students see so that when they go out and if they are peer pressured, they can know what to say or what to do, how to act. If a friend asked me to vape and I said no, they would look at me differently because it's not something I can relate to them. 
for like community leaders and parents don't just don't like villainize your kids you know just like understand that a lot of it is peer pressure I would largely encourage youth leadership like what I do I work within my community against vaping drugs alcohol if a lot more people started to like understand the negative causes of vape and like come together as a community, I think it could be fixed for the most part. Having an open discussion, right there, open discussion, be real with the youth one-on-one -on -one, and uh, show them that, you know, while they are the leaders of tomorrow, we are the leaders of today and we can take action and educate them today. Youth leaders are the leaders of tomorrow. They are the ones that are seeing what is happening in the schools, in their communities. They can make a lot of change. Their peers listen to them. Letting them know that you're there is the first initial step. Um, letting them know that they have a voice, that they have access to not only me, but other resources, that Healing is definitely something that you can get through and stress and pain is only temporary. The power is in your hands. You, you can do it. It, it. You literally have the choice to come together, to communicate, to unite, and show our youth, the community, and the leaders of tomorrow what it means to be a leader today and make that impact decision, that impactful decision. I am one of many, I make good choices. I am one of many, I make good choices. I am one of many and I make good choices.